Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different on today's episode. Very different. Yep, I think that's a fair way of saying it. Alex, why don't you give us a little idea, a little bit of an idea about what uh, what we're doing here. You can explain it better than I can. Oh, I can explain it better. Okay, <laughs> so we wanted to have some fun, so we decided that if people can make YouTube videos that get hundreds and thousands of views... And they can do it based on reading Reddit posts and answering questions or mocking them or generally just interacting with Reddit because Reddit's fantastic and that's what they do. I'm sure you've seen the ones where people react to stupid like Yahoo questions, yeah? Oh, I, I lo- reaction videos, the yeah. height of creativity. We're, yeah. uh, we're, we're perusing <laughs> several subreddits possibly and picking yeah. out some interesting stuff to give feedback to. We're calling this uh, unsolicited answers, I believe. I think so. Unso- yeah, unsolicited advice. I'm not sure. You'll find out when you listen to this. It will be the if you have a better name or <laughs> think that know. this is terrible. Let yeah. us know either way, or if you love it, we'll do this more often because yeah. really, Reddit is a font of a limitless. I- free information yeah it's great information it's fantastic to start out we're actually just in the tabletop game design uh reddit because our our show is totally about tabletop game design so it makes perfect sense that we're there right so so we're going to peruse some of these uh fascinating uh insightful or just downright terrible questions i guess give some thoughts and possibly some ideas on these if uh if if it's looking for a discussion we're gonna see what we have to say about some of this. So I have a great way to start us off, Nathan. Great, go for it. I don't know if we want to just read the title, read the question, or if we want to include the usernames. I wouldn't include the usernames. I I don't think that that's necessary, but I would say probably the title, and then uh, read enough of the question, unless it starts dragging on. Where There's some really long ones sometimes. We're probably going to avoid those. Yeah, uh, really long ones are probably not great. Uh, but then also, if there's a point that's made up at the front, pretty much once they've actually made that point, I think we can just kind of peace out on that question and just start uh, start our answer. Um, so, so if we want to do yeah. that, then I I will start us off. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is: What do you say in the box if the game is for two, three, four, and six players? And they go on to comment: two to four, six. Two to six, two, three, four, six. Oh, thanks. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why can't you have? What do you say on the box? What, what, <laughs> no, no, no. Back, back. No, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta address one thing before we get to the box. Why can't you have five players? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not sure, but apparently you cannot have five. Five is right out. Two uh, players. you know what? They Three don't like players. prime numbers. Four, but you can't have five. <laughs> but six is fine. <laughs> uh, Okay. So the first uh, comment is actually fantastic. The first response to it is two plus, never above seven, and never actually seven. But three is okay. Four is okay. Five is not okay. Even six is okay. Six is a maximum. Never eight, never one. Two is a minimum. In conclusion, <laughs> any number I can play based on what I said before yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, no. I, okay, okay. Seriously, I think I would say something like, Two to four, and sometimes six. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell. I, I, first of all, I have to really question why a game can't have five players if it can have four players and it can have six players. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it requires teams, but then three is a question and, of why you can have three. Again, that really begs the question. Unless, okay, unless you can have three players or you can be playing in teams of two for three teams but then the four but then, four. Th- then the four see th- three do- <gasps> three doesn't work three doesn't work with this logic it can't be a team game if you can have a three-player game because then yeah. someone's not on a team I'd have yeah to see the, i'd have to see the rules of this game to understand how that well, you can't get past the box to figure out why it can't have five players i don't think you're going to want to see the rules nathan no <laughs> I, I think i think here's the thing is that regardless of what you put on the box to explain how many players there are 
you also have to kind of explain how the game plays on that box as well. You know, I honestly think that that one that that one first comment uh, answering the question should be on the box. Like that whole thing should be like, you know, where it's got the two to six players. It's just this tiny micro print that says this. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to say, yeah. ma- I believe yeah. the answer to this, a correct answer should say a maximum of six players cannot be played solo maybe i I don't know maybe it can't be played solo and apparently it can't be played solo when you're when you're out with friends like if you're (laughs) like like imagine you're the fifth wheel at that date and and like you're you're you have the two friend couples that are out there and then you're around chances are they're going to be playing the game and you're just sitting in the corner cheering because you can't play with five people. I was going to say, it's the fifth wheel, actually, it's like, yeah, sorry, you can't play, bye. Yeah. This is... Because you the- could put you could put two to six players if you could have five players. Yeah, exactly. But that messes that up. So it's like, why don't you just figure out how you can play with five players? You why can just- you not play with five players? This is basically you, me, and Steve, the game. <laughs> It's just you and me and your friend Steve. <laughs> the game. That's what they, they they should just call the game. Sorry, Bob, because you know it's gonna be Bob. It's just an odd man out in this scenario. I feel bad for Bob now. I I don't know how to explain that question away. Oh, I, my, I I found the answer for you. It plays with two or three players, or with two or three teams of two. I don't. Hmm. But mm. if you could play with three <laughs> players you you can't just play individually with f- five pl- players i okay okay so what you do is two or four or three or six so you could do with five players but the fifth player is going to be playing to uh, a team by themselves they'll get the fifth and sixth player stuff by themselves and everyone else is playing on a team it's mm-hmm. not that hard i figured out how you can play with five players and fix your box to say two to six players we just fixed this one. We're good. We, f- I guess we did. You're welcome, Internet. You're welcome, Internet. We <laughs> fixed. We fixed everything for you. I want to make a game now that is just for five players. No more, no less. No more, no less. It can only be played with five people, or teams of five people, but only one team. Yes, it can be played <laughs> with teams of five people, but it can. It has to be a derivative of five. There's no other way around it. You have four uh, people, you're out of luck. This you gotta is make for a, Bob. This is for Bob. <laughs> gotta make a, a game that can be played with the whole bar, Nathan. The whole bar. The whole bar. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations. We we solved the first one. So, there's that. Yes, hooray. Good job, us. Thanks, Internet. We solved all the problems. All right, let's see here. Uh, I have one. Let's see if there's anything to be had with this one. Uh, this is a post called... I made my first game ever. Am I freaking lost? And it has an exclamation point and a question mark after it, so you know they're serious. Uh, And uh, they say, LMAO, so that. Uh, So I spent a few hours finishing up the basic mechanical part of the game, scavenged some pieces from Monopoly for player tokens, and drew up some tester pieces. I figured it's ready. And boy, was it. I asked the girlfriend to play, and she got into it so hardcore my head was spinning. LOL, she beat me. I'm going to tweak it a bit more. Aesthetically pleasing, and of course, a couple more tests, blind included. But I think it's actually ready for prototyping. Monopoly pieces make it aesthetically pleasing, Nathan. Yeah, first comment is, I don't mean to burst your bubble, but you've already prototyped it. Yeah, that, that, the prototype phase is using components that are not like legit components for an actual game. Yeah. They're mocking pieces of whatever you've got lying around, like deck of cards or Monopoly yeah. pieces. Pills, if you've got a lot of pills lying around, maybe. Just don't let your cats eat the game pieces in that case. You get the um, kibble. You put yeah, the little no, kibble shapes. Then, yeah. then they'll actually eat them. You get the lucky charms. You put the heart stars and horseshoes on the board. There you go. But, then you can eat them. But I guess the thing that's really confusing about this post is when they're saying, like, am I freaking lost? It doesn't really sound like they're lost at all. It sounds like they're pretty much on board. Maybe they meant, and I lost, because they lost the game playing it against their girlfriend. Oh, and I freaking lost. Oh, maybe yeah. that's what they meant. Yeah. Although, maybe they're tweaking it because they lost. I don't know. Yeah, see, now, you... that, that does beg the question. If you're just making a game so that you can win at it, 
I don't know if that's a good game. There, there's a, I don't know, man. Anyway, moving on. I just found a really good one. Okay. It's a, does a game like humans and households exist? I want to make a game set in, exa- set in an exaggerated memeish version of our world, but I don't know if it exists. I honestly feel like this would be like some sort of Cards Against Humanity clone. Uh, it sounds like a party game. It sure does. Uh, or like, what's that meme? So you want to create a game that's very much like our actual world. I'm wondering if the reason you don't see a ton of those is because it would be really boring. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Millennial Monopoly is a thing, and apparently it's fantastic. Millennial Monopoly is a thing. We we already talked about that, so hey, there's there's a thing. Apparently uh, that's, a, even though the price tag is like something millennials can't afford. Hey, yes, oh. that was a fun thing um, about that. Yeah, but, I don't know. See, here's the thing. You don't need to make exaggerated, meme versions of a world. That's what memes already are. Doesn't anybody get the fact that our world is basically a giant meme at this point? Like, no, we're too busy Naruto running at Area 51. I don't, like, an extreme memeish version. You know what sad thing is? Basically, that's the emoji movie, but in game form. <laughs> yeah, I that's don't, accurate. Yeah. That's I like don't... anything PewDiePie does, but in yeah. game form. And you, do you know how enjoyable it was to watch the meh emoji? So think about that. I didn't watch the emoji movie, so I, no. I did not watch it either. But you know what? Just watching the the meh emoji be like the star of a show gave me just as much as I needed to know about that film. <laughs> and we're done watching this. Yeah, we're done watching. I don't that. see a reason to make a game set in an exaggerated image version of our world because that's just like a parody of a parody. Mm. At that point, that's a very meta game. That'd be like, oh. You're a YouTuber, but you only do reaction videos. Right. It's like, oh, right. this is such... It'd be like, it, it, it'd be like really like your... cheap humor. Yeah. And some people are really into that. Again, Cards Against Humanity clones are a dime a dozen now. I remember, I think it was iDubs, where he was explaining, um, reacting to things is not a skill. <laughs> like, no. He just outright said, reacting to things is not a skill. I mean, look at us. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah, <laughs> if we can do it, we can... If Nathan and I can do it, it's, it's... Sorry, guys, it's not a skill. I'll I'll give another one a good old college try here. Do you ever get that feeling? That's what it's yes. called. Yes, I get that feeling all the time. You should go see a doctor. Hello, guys. I was wondering if you guys ever get that feeling of, hey, is this a brand new idea? Am I copying someone else's idea? What are the chances? For example... I am trying to build a co-op card game in which there are special characters, hunter, mage, soldier, inventor, taken from different universes that fight a boss that invaded their main base. The goal is to beat the boss in a certain time, rounds, before he wipes everything. The real challenge comes from the fact that the boss has sometimes weak spots and it is built, uh, built, I guess is what they're trying to say, it says build, but from parts, head, arm, leg, left leg, etc. A massive thing. Of course, the characters have multiple choices to do every turn, like quick training, hospital, dangerous, quarters, and so on. To be honest, I personally haven't played a game like this, but I would love an input regarding this thought, and of course, about the main idea. Thank you in advance. Just to start off, I understand the feeling of, I think I might be copying something else, because in some way, everything is built off of something else. Yes. I cannot say that what, they're talking about is exactly one of them but i can understand where you get that idea like just when they're saying special characters like hunter mage soldier etc classes yes character classes are a thing they do exist taken from different universes yeah actually there's there's a few different games that do like try to pull from multiple worlds and settings and stuff like that things like uh rifts i think is one of the big ones uh, that's out there that has multiple settings and but actually when like i see hunter made soldier inventor or stuff like that i think either about diablo which actually kind of has similar classes to that or of course D D, which has something to that effect i mean even world of warcraft has things like that too so oh yeah yeah actually wow has probably closer than anything hunter mage yeah that's very similar 
a lot of the elements that they're talking about in this particular thing are definitely ones that are are derivative of other things. But the key is, is that it feels like they're kind of getting molded into something new by trying to take different ideas and put them together. And that's and that's the thing. It's yeah. actual advice. Don't worry if your idea sounds similar to a different idea. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has had an idea. Everyone has similar ideas at some point. Your idea is probably not super original. Someone else has probably thought of something very similar to it. And it's not a big deal. Yeah. It happens. A beat a boss in a certain time. So I'm getting the idea that the idea behind this game is being able to, like, you and a bunch of friends have this, like, card game uh, where you have to beat a boss character in a certain amount of time. So you're basically doing a boss raid, but as a card game. Sounds about right. So... You can kind of think of it as most RPGs, but like when you get to the big climactic boss fight, but in a card game form. I actually have not heard of anything specifically like that. I think there's a card game called Boss Fight. The, yeah, that sounds, <laughs> sounds like that's probably probably it. I, I will refer to the uh, top comment. Boy, I don't know if that's an accurate quote from, from Marie Antoinette, but there is nothing new except what has been forgotten. It should be. It should be a real thing. Uh, it's just saying, I wouldn't it's worry too much. It's now been attributed to so, Marie uh, So, yeah, Luke, use the force, Luke, is totally something Albert Einstein said. It is. But they say, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about originality as long as you are making a fun game and not actively copying something you will find it will always feel different. Yes, you can have that feeling that it's not necessarily a, as brand new an idea as you would like it to be, but that does not necessarily mean you should not do it. Right. Uh, you should totally Absolutely. keep going. If you enjoy it and you like it and you think that it, it, it's fun and you got something going, keep going with it. Even if it is something similar to something that's previously existing, you can, it, it's going to be original. If it's too close to something else, you can tweak it. Fun fact on that note, mechanics cannot be copyrighted. So you could straight up lift the game. As long as you reword it and don't use it word for word, you can straight up lift a game's rules and mechanics. Yeah. There's not a whole lot they can do about it unless they're a big company and, like, trademark that stuff. Well, good example, just just to give people an idea, is usually when you think about the D20 die, you're probably thinking about D&D. Like, usually it's very associated with that. But any RPG is allowed to use a D20. There is no saying that you can't. <laughs> no one has a trademark on being able to use a D20 dice system. There's a quick example for you. Do you ever get that feeling? Yes, and if you do, you should go to the doctor. I have a uh, a good one here, and it's actually not the one we can rip on. Well, we could, but there's no point. This one just says, as a title, need help! Exclamation point. Hello, I'm a first-time designer and trying to figure out what program to use for my deck builder. Any help? Yes. I suggest a deck of playing cards. Mm -hmm. or note cards yes, and a pencil or a pen or marker mm -hmm. and write all the things or draw it out on that and use that first. Afterwards, tabletop simulator you can do cards in. The game crafter you can make cards in. I'm pretty sure drive through RPG you can make cards in. Uh, but for programs, Photoshop or Illustrator, probably Illustrator because it's a little better um, for that type of stuff, layout and whatnot. But honestly, if you're first designing cards, paper, playing cards, note cards, things like that, super easy to just write down all the things you need, or even just print them out and cut them up, you know, just for prototyping. Uh, after that, then look into, like, Illustrator Photoshop. Actual advice! That's okay, we can give actual advice. I, I think that that's actually... I don't mind actually adding to the conversation in a useful and constructive way. <laughs> Here's uh, actually here's a quick one for you that might also be useful and and informative. This one is simply titled uh, "Flip This Card" symbol. I need a simple, intuitive icon that means "Flip this card over." Is there something fairly universal that isn't copyrighted, a la the MTG tap symbol? So the thing about that is they did trademark that symbol, so you can't use it. Mm -hmm. They didn't copyright it; they trademarked it. You can't copyright that crap. But for that, you could always have, like, a picture of a card or, like, a couple cards, like, splayed out and then, like, an, an arrow on it mm -hmm. or a slightly curved arrow on it or something like that. Or you could just say, or have an F for flip, not to pay respects to flip. You don't have to use a symbol. You can always, like, make a stylized word or whatnot. 
as long as you denote that this thing means doing this action, yeah. it doesn't really matter what you use. Yeah, symbols are uh, really confusing if you don't know how to use them correctly, but I would imagine that like, if you visualize in your mind a, a symbol that you would put for flip, I would use that. Like, if you wanted to use the like, like you have like a little outline of like Flip Wilson, use that. I mean, that you would... could just use the table flip uh, emoji. Yeah, you could do that. Like, just just do a table flip icon. That way, people yeah. will understand. Oh, it's a table flip. Oh, right, flip the card. You do the upside down happy face. It's the flipped up face. The best, the best answer though, just for the record, the one that was upvoted the most. Uh, is actually a really good answer, which is uh, a U-turn arrow over a gray-filled card. So I mean, just that would also work. So just so, so so just a U. I would just go super literal and just put flip with an exclamation point. <laughs> also works. You could do that too. Zigzags, if you don't want to do a U-turn, or just like a card falling. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is also a good. This is down a little bit further, but a card with the bottom left corner curling up. I've seen that happen, like where it where it's just like transposed over the front that looks like you're actually turning the card, like in in the corner. You could try something like that. That uh, work. Yeah, it, it's hard because so many of those, since other people are already thinking of it, it's probably been done. So I don't know if any of those are trademarked. I would kind of imagine where they're talking about U turns. That's probably one of the, your best options. I, I can't see them doing much with the trademarking of that. This one says custom dice testing. Okay. Question. Mm. It says, I've recently dreamt up a game design, and after I started putting ideas to paper and designing cards, I realized that the ideal system of the design would be based around dice, but not just numerical pips. Each die would represent a character, much like couriers or dice masters, or maybe some sort of bonus dice, so the faces would have to be custom icons. Right. I could drop what these dice would look need to look like, no problem there, but how would I go about playtesting the game? Is there some way to cheaply make custom dice for testing, or do the game designers of Reddit have an alternative, alternative solution? Yes. Uh, again, we're going to point you at the Game Crafter right here, because they have custom stickers that you, uh, you can design stickers that can go on dice that have spots for the stickers. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a really easy way to do it because you get flat surface dice mm -hmm. with borders around it that you can put the stickers into and you can test it out. It's a fairly cheap method to do this. Mm. Um, if you want to do it even cheaper, make paper dice. You can do that. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. There are templates on how to make those. That's less sturdy. Obviously, it would work for a great prototype. Super cheap, because you would just draw the dice pattern, and then draw the faces you want, and then cut it out and fold it up, mm -hmm. tape it together, call it good. Um, obviously, your results might be skewed, because they're not properly weighted and measured dice at that point. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, stickers. Di uh, Game Crafter offers that as well. Right. Uh, we're just doing a plug for the game craft today. Cool. We should just tag JT Smith in the sense. Yeah, we'll so. just take we'll, we'll just sell uh, JT. Um here's the other thing too. I've seen it for relatively cheap money if you just want to play around with it. The oversized dies. They're like they're just they're they're like a, a regular die, like a six sided die if that's what you're looking to use. But they're just oversized, they're much bigger. So if you I wanted have a foam one. Yeah, 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 there's foam, but there are some that are, are hard. If you were looking to be able to try and, like, lay out what you wanted your die to actually look at, you could get a larger one, and then you theoretically could then scale it down when you go to a to an actual uh, prototype. But, you know, for, for just your design portion, uh, maybe, maybe try to use something larger. You could probably just even make that out of cardboard if you wanted to <laughs> make a giant cardboard die. Oh, actually... Come to think of it, just get a just get a regular six by six box. Just fold up a six by six box, and then you have a six inch by six inch die that's six go. sided. I mean, you can just put your stickers on that. That actually is probably the easiest and quickest solution. And you don't have to worry; those aren't very costly, so you can lay out your dies and and all of that. Sounds like the artwork is going to be kind of um, involved for that. Who knows? It might help if you if you have a larger canvas to work on to begin with. Here's kind of a freeform one. We can we can have some fun with this. Oh, good. Need inspiration. What are some good themes for a roll and move game? I know, I know, roll and move is a bad mechanic, but I have a fun twist on the idea. 
The only problem is I need a sensical theme to get it rolling. Maybe the theme is hiking? What theme makes sense for a roll and move game? A roll and move game? Isn't Monopoly technically a roll and move game? Aren't all those Milton Bradley games roll and move games? Sorry. Technically? Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Candyland? Like, can- oh, Candyland is great. Well, Candyland, you don't roll, though. You have the cards. You pick up the yeah. card and I mean, you move it's roll to and move. The... Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's a I mean, card and move. It's a flipping. I mean, move. still, it, the mechanic is roll and move, and then do things yeah, when you land. You roll, you roll dice, and then you move around the number of squares. Basically, yeah, it's not very strategic at all. <laughs> In fact, it's completely luck based. Um, but yeah, no, Monopoly is a good example of that. Sorry, Parcheesi is kind of like that, but you actually have multiple pieces, so you can strategize that. But yeah, the singular pieces, I think, is probably what uh, they're talking about. What's a good theme for a roll and move game? Um, traffic. Oh, that would yeah. be a good idea. Yeah. Now you have to roll and move your car in and out of traffic, weaving it through the road. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, and you only have so many tracks that you can go on. So you have like four, not five players, obviously. You never have five players. But you have four players or six players. <laughs> and, but and not five. Absolutely five. not five. You never have five players. But then, But you only have like two lanes of traffic. And so if you get blocked by, like, two players, you can't move around them when you roll. <laughs> you have to wait for one of them to move out of the way so that you can get around. The entire time Ludacris is playing in the background, just move. Get out the way. <laughs> the upgrade system, like, you can land on cards, and you can, like, upgrade your car, and it's Pimp My Ride. <laughs> and so you get, like, the wheels. Eventually, you can, like, get the low rider thing so that you can, like, hop over cars, and you can use that on special occasions. We just, like, made a whole game. That was fun. <laughs> Ooh! Here's another great idea for a roll and move game. Uh, roller derby. Bowling. Bowling? I don't know how it would work, but bowling. <laughs> a roll and strike. But no, I'm thinking roller derby, because then you can, like, you could have custom characters that are, are like, your derby, or your, your, like, extreme derby players. That are like pushing people out of the way and everything like that. See, roller derby would work. That's yeah. a roll and move game, and then literally it's an action too. Yeah, uh, roll and move, and then shove. Roll like you and get a shove. Bonus dice for shoving. Yeah, it's roll and shove, not a roll and move. I feel like, oh yeah, roll. Well, roll and move, but then you shove, and then you like put someone in a headlock and beat the crap. I don't. I've never actually watched roller derby. I'm totally probably wrong. Literally, the only thing I know about roller derby is what I saw on Whip It when I watched that movie. <laughs> Besides that, I know nothing, and I'm sure that that was very accurate as the film. Yeah, no, anything where you you move in a linear pattern in a circle is going to work out real well for you for a roll and move game. I I guess it doesn't have to be circular like it is in Monopoly, like, you know, Candyland or those things, or Snakes and Ladders, you know, those those go from a, a start point to an end point. So you could you could go on the road to nowhere. That could be your driving game. Who gets to work first? Or who gets home first? That's a better one. Stuck in traffic, the game. Who can, who can get home first so that they can turn on the TV and decide who actually gets to watch Netflix? What series are we watching tonight? So there you go. Some ideas for roll and move. Here's one. Card sizes. Why use custom sizes? As a designer, publisher, I'm curious as to why a decision is made to use custom card sizes in your game. There are special cases, of course, but for almost all scenarios, there's a normal size that will work just fine. I write this as I I am opening the Wizard Always Wins and realizing none of the cards in the game fit any of my sleeves. Why do this? That's a great question, and I have a really good answer for you, and it is, I don't know. People (laughs) like to be difficult. I mean, I kind of have a visual idea of what a card is supposed to look like. There's a certain size that just I think people got used to. I mean, Magic the Gathering and playing cards and poker cards yep. and uh, Pokemon cards and all the ones that Wizards of the Coast makes all are pretty much all cards. the same size. Yep. Um, mm. Baseball cards are all kind of the same size. Mm-hmm. All sports cards are all the same size. I don't know if they're all relatively the same size to each other, but I know they're all the same size. Yeah. But I think, like, if you buy sleeves at a, at a place, they will typically fit your Magic Pokemon your baseball cards, your all, all, they will fit most of the cards you get. Mm-hmm. So the question that they're asking is a very accurate question of 
why would you make custom card sizes that won't fit sleeves? Mm -hmm. Just, it might not be a trading card game, and they might not have numerical value, like, money-wise, outside of being in the game itself. Yeah. But, like, people still do like to, like to keep care of their, their possessions, their cards, all their things like that, and keep them in nice condition. So the question is very valid. I don't understand why you would do this either. Mm. Like, unless you're making jumbo size cards for like visual representation, so people with hard, uh, hard sight. Yeah, people who have can't really see the smaller ones. Yeah, I can see that as a really good reason to make a bigger size card, perhaps. Right. Or if you're not like, it's not like a card game, but there are cards in the game. Right. Like for stats and things that you put on Mm -hmm. the places, I can see those being other sizes as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see that, or if possibly they need to make it larger so that they can do also for, like, visual impairment, or even if you're blind, where they can emboss, or they can do some kind of a braille, they need to make the cards larger in order for that to actually work. I can I can kind of understand those. Uh, but most of the time, I usually see them as a kind of a novelty, like they'll have the really big, exaggerated cards, or they'll have the tiny little mini deck cards. Yeah. But but have you ever tried to hold a little mini deck of cards in your hand? <laughs> it looks ridiculous. It's like you're a ma- you're trying to be a mouse and you're holding the little mini cards in your hand. The the only time I can really see it being useful is it will depend on like the context that you're putting it in. Like if you have a deck of cards uh but your board itself is not particularly large and you need to have the cards fit to the pieces on the board like you know it in in the format that you have uh but then again i don't know why you wouldn't also just design your board for a regular size playing card (laughs) because that would make sense too unless it's like super detailed like you have like a grid layout and you need your cards to actually fit to that grid like i can kind of understand that but I don't know. People are so used to a certain size that just feels good in your hand, and I think it pretty much all just goes back to the actual deck of playing cards that everybody eventually just kind of took off from, and, like, you just get used to it. Sometimes you just get used to a thing, and people have no reason to change it, so they don't change it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it's really weird when you get things like that, and they're totally different sizes than what you're used to. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, it's one Why of those, you if, do this? It's, it's the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And somebody right. has to come along and be like, but what if we did fix it? But what if we did something weird? What if we tried well, something Well, then people weird? would complain. And then we... did something weird and they're uncomfortable around and you. Then we have questions like this. That's what happens. Yes. This one, uh, game mechanics posting. Hi guys, I have made several tabletop game mechanics and games for me and my friends, and although I will never be able to sell them, I am interested in finding a way to share them and discuss each one about what people think so I can improve the ones that still use and uh, learn from the ones that failed. What's the best way for me to share them? Thank you for your help in advance. I mean, you're probably in a pretty good place for that already. There there are Discord servers and such that actually deal with specific mechanics, so if you wanted to go to one of those, that might be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of ways. I mean, actually, he's considering that he's on the Tabletop Game Design subreddit, he's a... Uh, it's not a bad place to be. Um, you can you can get deeper into that subreddit too if you have something specific. But no, never look at the subreddits. It's just gonna take you down a rabbit hole you'll never get out of. We had a really interesting time. Uh, a lot of fun, actually, being able to go through uh, comments, things that uh, people are talking about in tabletop gaming. Uh, over on Reddit, we really did enjoy it. In fact, we enjoyed it so much that we just kept scrolling and kept looking at different uh, threads. And uh, that's why we had to end up breaking this up into two parts, because then we ended up recording for like an hour and a half, because we, we kept finding things. So on the next episode, um, we, uh, we, we ditched Bob. Sorry. Sorry, Bob. But uh, we end up uh, designing a, like a whole card-based war game out of the blue. So that's interesting. Uh, we, we get an interesting question about uh, co-designing with your friends. And uh, somehow choose your own adventure board games come up. It's a lot of interesting stuff. We might even discuss LARPing for five seconds.
So that's a fun thing. Look forward to that. In the meantime, if you want to get completely caught up on Delve, you can go over to DelveCast.com. Everything that we do is over there, including our videos and articles. Everything is right in one convenient place. While you are there, why not just click on the little Patreon banner that we have up at the top? Our Patreon is uh, fairly inexpensive. You can get on there for a dollar a month, and for that, you can get episodes ahead of time. Extended, uh, unedited episodes, by the way, of these things. So you get to hear it uh, usually a lot sooner. And uh, also in in an unedited form before we go and and actually tweak it and take out some stuff. Uh, Everything that we might have left on the cutting room floor, you get to hear that as well. As well as some of the draft copies of some of the videos, the bigger videos that I did. uh, The early drafts and everything I put on there. A lot of stuff that, you know, the, the general population would not be apprised of. And a big thank you to our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dominic Perry. You can find us on a whole host of podcast apps. Wherever you get podcasts, we are there. Do not forget to like and review and subscribe. We always appreciate that. It helps us get noticed. It helps for visibility. Uh, so anything that you leave is useful. Uh, if, uh, if you hate the show, uh, say that too. I don't know. Why not? It's probably useful. Haven't tried it. Who knows? You can also find us on Twitter. I am at Citanium, Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delph Podcast. And so, until we return next week and dig, or delve, we should say, because keeping on brand, back into Reddit, uh, thank you for joining us on this episode, and the internet is a very dark and scary place, folks. It's dangerous to go alone. <laughs> Just keep, keep that in mind. Here's a, here's a random sword from an old dude in a cave. Someone's going to get these references at some point. I don't know when. It's Legend of Zelda. Thank you for listening, everybody. Bye.